Hey, I'm Alex and welcome to the very first session through linemarking.expert. Now, today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest decisions you'll make when starting a line marking business and that is the equipment that you're going to be using. Now, the gear that you choose is absolutely going to be shaping the size and type of projects that you can take on um, and how quickly your business can grow. So, look, don't worry if um, you know you don't have to start big. You can actually scale up depending on your budget and the goals you've set for your business over a period of time. Now, when I first started, I had just one machine. In fact, this is this is literally the machine. This is the Graco 5900. You'll see it in a lot of our videos, and I always talk about it being my favourite machine. It set me back around eight thousand pounds, and I paired it with a gas dryer for another five thousand um, pounds, and I also bought a second-hand grinder, which cost me a few hundred quid. All in about fifteen thousand pounds to get my business off the ground to start my very first job. Now, was it worth it? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, this setup allowed us to take on outdoor projects like car parks with a two-man team, and we were generating around two and a half thousand pounds a day from just using this line marking machine, a small dryer, and a grinder. So, look, if you're thinking of starting small, I'd recommend a good quality machine, just like the Graco 5900. Uh, it can get you up and running quickly, and I have put some links below so you guys can see where we get ours from as well. Now. As your business grows, your equipment should obviously grow with it. And over time, I've added an awful lot of other machines such as um, bigger line removal gear, shot blasters, indoor machinery, generators, um, a whole host of different types of spray machines that allows us to do much, much bigger jobs and variable sort of jobs and colors as well. So the more equipment you have, the more types of jobs you can take on and the more efficient you can become, but it's a bigger risk. So you know, let, let's be real about it. If you're just starting out and you need to keep your costs low, which is what I would recommend, I would start out really, really small. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I made was investing too much money too soon on equipment that really I didn't need. And that money could have probably been put to better use elsewhere. I spent about a quarter of a million pounds in the first year. Um, and really, I come back to this 8,000 pound machine every single day of the week. And that's what I rely on my business running on. So. Now for outdoor markings, I would say that 15,000 pound investment gets you the gray coat, it'll get you a drying machine and a grinder, and it's a good solid start, but you actually don't even need to spend that much. In fact, I think you could start with a budget of under 3,000 pounds. And I know I went big early on, and I sort of look back and regret that, but you definitely don't have to, and you can absolutely learn from my mistakes. So I think if you're starting with a really light budget, you can still get started for about 3,000 um, pounds. You know, and of that, that would give you all of the training, that would give you the hands-on sort of side of the training, and it would allow you to get the hand molds um, and really just get going for that, to be honest. Now, although you can start for less, and in fact, I've put a link below so you can download how to get started for less, um, it won't break the bank, but it will limit the size of the jobs you can do. So with a smaller investment, you can start doing small car parks, but you may find it limiting when it comes to doing sort of 50 parking bays plus because it's quite back breaking to sort of lean over and sort of bend over and pull the, pull the thing down the line. So the, my ultimate goal here is to be able to get you guys trained, but also to the point you've made your money back very quickly so that you can recommend me to other people. Now, if your goal is to do that cheaply, absolutely we can do it. If you've got a bigger budget, absolutely we can help still. If you also wanna get involved in indoor line marking, um, I've never found a cheap way of getting involved in indoor line marking, but it is a big thing that you might want to consider. Um, we use three-phase shot blasters, grinders, and generators. A setup like that will easily set you back around sort of 18 and a half, 18 and a half thousand pounds to get started. Um, but the, the indoor jobs, I mean, on a day like today, it is literally starting to rain, um, and it's perfect for this sort of weather um, when it does start to rain. So look, at the end of the day, the key is matching your equipment to your business needs. And whether you're starting out with a bigger budget, sort of 15K to get started in car parks, or just a couple of thousand pounds, um, you can absolutely do it. The key is getting the right training and then matching that equipment to the projects that you're gonna win. So the beauty I would say of all of this business is you can get started for a lot less. Um, you can easily grow it as you sort of find those customers um, and keep that investment low and manageable. So look, that's it from me in this session. We're gonna jump over to session two. Um, which is all on the paints that we would use for outdoor line marking. Now, if you're watching this outside of the course player, uh, this is one of the very first sessions out of around 60 sessions where we talk about how to get involved in line marking, which equipment we're gonna use, and then we break down all of the paints, how to's, how we install everything, and basically go through the entirety um, of how to get started in line marking. So 
If you're not already signed up to, uh, to join us on this and do the hands-on training as well as the remote learning, uh, you can find out more at linemarking.expert. Um, and we do a masterclass call every Tuesday at around 10 a.m. I normally do them. Um, they take about half an hour and I go through the very sort of starting and set out of, of how to get involved. So look, that's it from me for this one. I will see the rest of you over in session two where we're going to talk about the indoor paints. Um, and then for, for those of you not on the, uh, on the course, um, by all means, drop onto a masterclass call. Really look forward to seeing you there. And uh, yeah, take care.